And before you come at me about the way that I staple my zines, the, this is my zine essentials, okay? The Today I want to talk to you about my seven zine making essentials. These are things that I absolutely need to use for my zine process and I use them every day. I know the title says these are seven things all zine makers must have, but I want you to know you don't need to get these things. There are ways that you can do this stuff very cheaply and sometimes free. Okay, so the first thing that I think all zine makers need is a bone folder. It looks like this. It looks exactly like that thing that they tell you to stick your tongue out at the doctor and then they use it to flatten your tongue. I use this to flatten the creases on my zines. This really helps get really nice flat folds. Bone folders cost about six bucks from Michaels, that's where I got mine, but if you don't want to spend money on the bone folder or you don't have access to a bone folder, you can also use your nails. You can also use the side of a coin, you can use the side of a ruler, you can use the side of a pair of scissors, you can use a library card, pretty much anything with a very hard flat edge will help you get Get flatter creases on your folds. The second thing that I like to have on hand is a little piece of cardboard like this. It's just a little strip of cardboard that I fold in half like this to make it a little bit thicker. The reason I use this is because I don't have a long arm stapler and before you come at me about the way that I staple my zines, the, this is my zine essentials, okay? This is what I use personally. Not everybody has access to stuff, so this is something that I found is very helpful for my process. I just put the little piece of cardboard on a flat surface, I open up a standard stapler that I have, and then I bind my zines that way. And the cardboard is to help protect my desk so I'm not like stabbing it with staples all the time. So this may help someone that doesn't have access to a long arm stapler like me. And this is just how I've been stapling scenes for over six years and I just continue to do so. If you don't have access to any staplers at all, you can go to your local library, you can go to FedEx, or you could go to Staples and Office Max. Those places have stations with office supplies that you can use for free. My favorite place to go is FedEx because they have these little stations in the middle of their store where you don't have to ask an employee for any of the office supplies. You could just go to one of the stations and they have things available for you to use like staplers, stapler removers, whiteout, pens, markers, tape. So that's a good resource for you to use if you don't have access to any office supplies at all. The next thing that I love to use every single day for my zine making process is a self-healing mat. This is really convenient if you don't have a flat surface readily available for you to use to fold your zines. It provides a flat surface for you so you can get really nice accurate folds, but also I love that it's healing so I can use my X-Acto knife to trim zines. But a self-healing mat can cost you as little as $1 from the Dollar Tree. I also have one from Art Supply Warehouse and it cost about $14. Another zine essential that I use every single day is a guillotine cutter. I got mine from Staples for about $22, but like I said earlier with the office supplies, you can walk into any local library, any FedEx office, any Staples, any Office Max, and you can use their supplies for free. And they often do have guillotine cutters there. And the purpose of this is to be able to trim your zine in a faster, more efficient way. I like to use mine all the time because I often print out my zines and they have little borders around the edges. So this way I can trim a lot of zines at once instead of cutting them individually with a pair of scissors. It cuts my zines and trims them really, really fast and it saves me a lot of time. Another huge thing that I recommend a lot of zine makers have on hand is a binder with sleeves inside. And the reason for this is because I use a binder with sleeves to organize all my master copies. A master copy is basically just the original zine that you make and then you use that original zine to make copies. This binder has all of my master copies in it. And what's so cool about it is that if you have mini zines, you can unfold them and put them in the sleeves. You can use bends if you want. I use bends all the time for my zines and also for zines that are sent to my PO box. I store them in a little container like this. I actually got this from Daiso, which is a Japanese dollar store. And you can store all your zines in something like this. 
This is also space saving. I just stack them up in my closet and I have, I have so many bins like this in my closet just filled with zines. Okay, and for my final zine essential that I absolutely need, especially being a small business owner, is a bunch of little wax sleeves. And I also use plastic sleeves. I'm trying to stay away from plastic, but I have a bunch of plastic sleeves that are about three by five like this. And I use them to put my mini zines into that come with stickers or buttons or extra, you know, fun stuff. I have variety zine packs that come with four mini zines. And instead of selling them all individually, I was like, oh, let me just put them in a pack and then people can walk away with more value. But I use this for my shop mainly, but if you do zine fest or craft markets and stuff like that, this is really convenient for you to package up your zines in a way that's more, I don't know, pleasing to the eye, like making them more interesting instead of just having them laying out. You can try packaging them up and making them look really nice. That's a very, very optional zine essential. That's just what works for me because I do sell my zines in my shop and with wholesale and at craft markets and zine fests and stuff. And I found that this is a great way to draw attention to my zines, especially if people aren't familiar with zines. They see something that's packaged like this and they're like, oh, what's this? Why is there so many? What's going on? And then it, it sparks this conversation about zines and my work and about art. And I just think it's really convenient to have to package for my shop. So. That's all my zine essentials. I hope that they're really helpful for you on your zine journey. Just so you know, you don't have to break the bank to make zines. All of the stuff that I mentioned, you can get them from Michaels, you could get them from an office supply store, sure. But a lot of this stuff, actually every single one of the things, let me think, everything except for the guillotine cutter, you can get from the dollar store. And I get all of my stuff from Daiso, which is the Japanese dollar store I mentioned. So if I got every single thing that I mentioned here from Daiso, I would spend 20 bucks or less. Promise you, promise you, you don't have to spend that much money. Sometimes you don't even have to spend money at all. Cause like I said, you can go to a library, FedEx, Office Max, Staples, you can use their office supplies. And also if you go to your local library and you have a library card, I'm only saying this speaking from, I'm a California resident and my local library does this and I looked it up and it seems like a lot of other local libraries do this as well. But if you have a library card and you want to make copies of your zines, just look into this, look into this, because this is something that I do at my local library, but I'm allowed to print 20 copies for free a day. So that's something I would look into. Just get creative. You don't have to spend a lot of money to make your zines. Um, you know, get creative like what I told you about using the cardboard for a stapler, you know? Like, I don't have a long arm stapler because I think for whatever reason, I just, at the time when I looked into it, it was out of my budget. I could probably buy one now, but it, this works for me. This works and it's accessible and I think it will work for a lot of people. So think about other ways that you can be accessible with your zine making. Really get DIY, get messy, get punk, get trashy with it. Like you can use pretty much anything to make a zine. I hope that my tips were helpful. If you have any tips, please leave them in the comments and let us know because it's gonna help someone. I know there's people that don't leave comments but read the comments. So please leave them tips, leave me tips. I would love to know if there's any cool resources that I should be aware about as a zine maker because like I always try to tell you guys, I'm not a zine expert or anything. I just love making zines myself and a big part of the zine community is sharing what you know and making this stuff available to other people because zine making is all about accessibility and being able to express yourself in a way that's cheap and is fun.